Wouldn't it be cool if you can just pop in a custom file type to get custom syntax highlighting, as well as differentiate LSP behavior versus syntax highlighting as well? So that's what we're gonna cover in this video. Let's go over a couple of different use cases though before we jump into the code. So I've got this dockerized example app here and it has a .env, that example file, as well as a .env file. And notice how they both have different icons here in the sidebar. And if we take a look at the real .env file here, which happens to be get ignored, notice that the syntax highlighting looks nice, right? We have cool looking comments here and all the different variables here are syntax highlighted as well. But if you take a look at the env that example file, we also get nice looking comments, but the variables themselves are not syntax highlighted. And if we take a look here at the file type, set file type here, we can see that file type is conf. And if we go and take a look here at the file type for that env file, uh, that one is going to be .env. So here we are where we have two different files with two different file types, but they share some, uh, you know, common things like, you know, the comments look nice. That could be up to you depending on whatever you're working on. But in my mind, you know, at least for this specific use cases, I really wanted this .env example file to visually look different than the .env file. So the real .env file is going to be used by the project. But you can imagine, you know, maybe you accidentally open the example file, make some modification to it, and it didn't have an effect because you're modifying the wrong file. So yeah, having that visual indicator here, be able to jump between them, I just know that, oh, if I have the really good syntax highlighting, I must be modifying the real file. So that's one use case here. You know, other use cases that you might have, for example, in my dot files, you know, let's say you want to open up a Z profile file. I have this idea of, you know, like a dot local file as well. So the idea here is these local files are get ignored, but the real file is uh, actually commit to version control. Um, but again, you know, just to be able to have syntax highlighting in the local files is helpful. This is not the same use case as that, that example with the env file before. But if you take a look here at the zprofile.local file, you know, this is also getting syntax highlighted like a shell script, just like the regular zprofile is. But that's not gonna work out of the box without some custom configuration because Vim or NeoVim doesn't understand that a, you know, a .zprofile, that local file, happens to be something that resembles a shell script. So if we take a look here at uh, the file type here, we can set the file type and we can see it's set to bash there. And then if we do the same thing for zprofile, then that is also going to be set to Z shell in this case. But yeah, things are working pretty good here. Uh, let's go and take a look here how all of this stuff is set up. If we take a look here at the file type that Lua, which by the way is gonna be in our .config NeoVim file type that Lua path here, that's an important path to remember. I've done videos about using LazyVim, et cetera. All this stuff is you know set up by that. But um, yeah, this behavior has nothing to do with LazyVim. But yeah, let's go over some of the code here to see how things work. Uh, maybe we can you know, cover this one last because these top two and bottom two are basically doing the same thing, uh, just slightly different patterns. But the real takeaway here is being able to leverage vim.filetype.add where you can put in a pattern, you know, a regular expression of your choosing. And then also when that pattern is matched, this file type is going to be set. So here, you know, that example we're just looking at for Z profile, you know, this is going to say basically any Z profile dot local dot hello dot ABC. It doesn't really matter, you know, what it happens to be. That is going to be set to be bash. And then likewise for aliases does the same thing. Um, for git config also does the same thing, but in this case, we're gonna be setting it to git config because if we take a look here at this git config file here, you know, take a look at the, the file type, that's gonna be git config. And then also we have this idea of a config.local file. You know, this is also going to be set to make sure we have really nice syntax highlighting here as well, which is pretty handy. And then also, you know, there was another example here where this one was going to be requirements uh, for any requirements dot whatever dot text file. So for example, you know, maybe you have something like a requirements lock dot text file, or, you know, maybe you have like production or whatever it happens to be, you know, this is Python dependency, dependency management, not super important here. But yeah, I just wanted to make sure that all those different variants of that file match the requirements syntax. I don't have a file to look at here in the dot files or even in this file here, you know, I switched over to using UV instead of requirements.txt. Doesn't really matter, but it just, you know, gets this consistent setup here to make sure that things are set up correctly for this in text highlighting. Now let's go over this one here, which is a little bit more interesting. Uh, again, we're also just using vim.filetype.add, but in this case here, we're actually using two different patterns instead of one. So this one is gonna say like, okay, for any .env file, it doesn't matter what it is, then we're just gonna set things to .env. But then we also have this exception here for the .env example file specifically. We're gonna override that one and set that as conf instead of .env. And this priority is very important. So if you don't set a priority, then the priority is going to be zero. 
And uh, in this case here, we want the priority to be higher. So basically the idea is this one is going to beat this one because you know this one you can think as a, as a more specific match. So the ordering that they're defined here is not important because the ordering here isn't deterministic. You know, even uh, you know if you have these flipped around, it doesn't really matter. You can't guarantee the order, but the priority is going to guarantee the order to make sure things work nicely. So yeah, that's basically what this comment describes here to make sure you get the different syntax highlighting, highlighting for this specific file type. But then this one is also kind of interesting here too because when you're dealing with a shell script, the way I have my dot file set up, at least, you know, I am using the bash LSP. I also have shell check and everything, you know, for linting and formatting and SHFMT, blah, blah, blah. All that stuff happens on file types that are going to be bash or shell. But in this case here, I did not want the ENV files to end up having all of that because, you know, if you take a look here at one of these ENV files here, you know, shell check or whatever is going to go crazy in this file and just throw a billion warnings about certain things here. But in this case here, we can just say, you know what, instead, let's just set these file types to be .env. But then we're using tree sitter language that register here to basically say, you know, when it comes to that .env file type, just syntax highlight it like bash. So we're kind of getting the best of both worlds here where we get really nice syntax highlighting in this .env file that matches bash. But all the bash LSP stuff and you know different configured linters and formatters and stuff, they're just not gonna take effect here because the file type is actually going to be .env instead of bash. So yeah, that's how all of that comes together here. So you know, if you have a different use case in mind for your setup, you know, really it's gonna come down to probably using a custom pattern here, setting to be whatever file type that you want. If you've got multiple, you can go and check it out here. I actually find that um, the help menu for them, that file type that add was actually pretty awesome. So it has all sorts of different examples here around different priorities and like, you know, you can have multiple patterns. So yeah, highly suggest that you go and check out this here if you wanna go and check out uh, more details about file type that add. Um, that's how I understood all the things here in the detail that I have here, which is of course not professional level, but good enough to read the docs, get some examples, and then apply it back to solve some use cases that I have. So with that said, yeah, let us know in the comments below if you've done any file type customizations. If you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer all of them. Uh, with that said, if you like the video, please give a thumbs up. It really does help a lot. Thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you in the next video.